in this segment, we will be talking about mush babies, what it means to wean them onto solid foods, when they will be ready for solid foods, and we will also be talking about babies with upper respiratory infections and how to identify symptoms and uh, what we do to help that. Um, and then I'm gonna invite Tia to come on. She has her two cute mush babies here. Come on in. a pop-up up up here now. Um, so this is pretty much all a mush baby needs. This is their setup. So um, if you ever thought, oh, well, I don't really have um, room to foster, we can provide you with a pop-up and they can stay in here. Um, they got their litter box, a soft place, you can throw some toys in there, um, and they have their mush bowl. Um, so these guys are about five weeks old. Um, so at this age, their back teeth are starting to come in. So that is when they'll be ready to start eating solid. Yes! Um, so these guys have began eating. So what mush is, um, it's pretty much weaning them from milk to regular kitty food. Um, so yeah, I'll get that. Their leftover mush and see if they want to eat that. Tia, what's going on with your shirt? So this is a um, regular sweatshirt, hooded sweatshirt that I put on backwards, and they seem to love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if you're busy cooking, or you know, and they're like begging you for something, you just put it in here, and they love to curl up in there right. and go to sleep, or you know, they're purring right now. Aww. And it's a kiddaroo couch. It's a kiddaroo. <laughs> chomping away so yeah this five week age this is when they're ready to wean um so yeah what mush is if you have that the bag of kitten formula we talked about that earlier in the bottle baby demo where they drink kitten formula um so when they're ready to start eating and they have those back teeth we will actually mix it with those mother and baby cat food cans thank you tia so we'll mix a little bit of the can. We'll put in some powder and some water um, to make kind of like a thick oatmeal consistency, um, just something nice and soft and still moist so that they get their hydration in there. Um, and then once these guys are a little older, maybe in about a week or two, you can start putting water on the side and they'll start to test out water. They might not like it at first, um, but yeah, you just start slowly introducing things that a cat will need. And then um, this is a really fun age too. I know Tia um, can really say that this age is fun. This is when they really start to realize that they're a kitten. They start to play and explore and start to, it's just a really cute age. It's a huh. Mess. It's huh. a mess. Yes, you turn it still for me. Yes. They'll tell you when they want to eat mm -hmm. and then they'll go to sleep. Yeah. They'll wake up, play a little and tell you when they want to eat again. That's it. <laughs> And um, so for these kitties, um, they do not need a heat disc anymore. Um, so they are past that four week stage. They can now thermoregulate. So they won't use heat disc anymore. They'll just use some food. Um, they'll start using the litter at this age. They become a little bit more independent. Um, and then with the mush, Tia, um, every, every foster is different. How often are you feeding them the mush, would you say? Um, they let me know probably about three or four times a day. Mm -hmm. I feed them just before um, we go to sleep so that they'll sleep through the night and they do. Yeah, so at this age, if you are not in a position to bottle feed uh, throughout the night, um, this is a good age to begin fostering. Oh, hi Christine, thank you for the stars, thank you for joining, welcome. Thank you, Maiden, for adopting. Thank you so much. Always um, adopt, don't shop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is Winston. He's he's excited. I don't know why. He's yeah. really pretty mellow. He sees the light. He's ready. He's yeah. ready to be a movie star. Yeah. yeah. And this is Benjamin Button. <laughs> mm. He was so tiny when I got him that he was like a little bit. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, for these guys, um, you know, they can really. Um, do good for the fleece blankets. Oh, and then if you notice this litter, 
This is a pellet litter that we provide for young kittens. Um, so rather than the sandwich, the pellets, um, kittens these age will start to kind of explore with their mouths and could accidentally eat the litter. So we do provide this pellet litter. Um, they are pooping on their own at this age. So they'll, they'll normally start using the litter box on their own um, around four to five weeks. So we don't have to stimulate them to potty like we did with the Dell's bottle babies. Um, so these guys are more independent, eating on their own, um, using the litter on their own. Um, so yeah, it's really fun to watch these little milestones with them and watch them go from teeny tiny bottle baby to um, curious kitten. Oh, thank you, Diane. Um, we used to work in front office and now we've uh, got her to be a bottle baby foster. Thank you so much for the stars, Diane. Thank you. 
But I just wanted to go ahead and talk about URI, um, which is an upper respiratory infection. Melanie has definitely helped us with URI kitties in the past. Um, so pretty much it is a kitty cold. So I don't know if you guys can see these photos here, but here's a sick kitty, um, snotty nose. You notice the eyes are squinty and crusty. Um, so when they get like this, um, it's pretty much a cold that just has not been, been treated yet. So they can actually get really uh, congested and it makes it real difficult for them um, to eat. So you notice how these guys are eating just fine. Um, a kitty with an upper respiratory infection, they do need treatment right away. Um, once they are congested, it can be hard for them to smell their food. They may um, not want to eat. They can begin to get dehydrated. Um, so when kitties come in like that, we definitely will do, um, normally just eye drops and antibiotics will help if it is caught soon enough. Um, we also have these amazing humidifiers. Um, and thank you, we've had some people purchase these off of the registry. These humidifiers definitely will assist with the antibiotics and help clear up their congestion and make them feel better. Um, and Melody, what was your experience fostering uh, your kitties with us? Well, the kitties were so weak when they first came. That's the thing is, I think they're they're already kind of you know compromised from being you know in situations where they may not be getting the best care or getting fed right. on a regular basis, and then they get this cold. And oh, when they first come, they're just so pitiful, and you just feel so oh no. I remember just looking at them every ten yeah. minutes, like are you okay? Are you okay? And then a few days and some eye drops and antibiotics, warmth and some mm -hmm. humidity. I always tent the. Um, pop up so that the hum humidifier, especially at night, will keep them really nice and steamed up. And mm -hmm. um, usually a week is about all it takes for them to get super yeah. healthy. Yeah. Although I had that one kitty, it was we mm -hmm. went on and on and on. We had three different rounds of antibiotics, and and then he just was this crazy little cat running around the house yeah. like normal. <laughs> um, so it's really one. It's really rewarding to see them bounce back. And, yeah. and you know, when you see a little kitty that week, and I remember when you first, I'm like, I don't know yeah. if I'm up to this. Yeah, <laughs> and it could, it could definitely look scary at first when you see a kitty that looks like this with just a little bit of TLC and um, a seven to 10 day course of medication. They end up looking like this in no time. And running around making your dogs crazy. Oh, thank you, Joanne, so much. Mahalo for the monetary donation. We appreciate that. We'll definitely be getting some humidifiers for sick kitties. Oh, thank you, Molly, for the stars. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know you're ready to run around. Right. This. And then um, just remember, there's also links on upper respiratory infections, different um, symptoms to look out for. Um, and this is why we vaccinate, guys. Vaccinations, it definitely will help so that they don't get such severe symptoms of URI. So we'll start vaccinations here at around six weeks old. Once the kittens are about a pound and a half, we'll start the vaccinations every two weeks. Um, and also dewormers. Dewormers is a big one. I didn't mention this with the bottle baby segment, but we will start dewormers as young as two weeks old, um, um, just to help with happy tummies and to prevent any diarrhea and anything like that. Um, oh, someone asked, how long do you foster? So, this is a very good question. Um, so, say Jodel with those bottle baby kittens, those kittens aren't going to be ready for adoption for about, mm, like, five weeks. Jodel does not have to foster those kitties for five weeks. She can foster them for a week or two if she needs a break or she just prefers to do bottle baby fosters and they start weaning like this. She can pass them on to a new foster. Or if I gave Melody six kittens who were um, sick on top of being too young for adoption, she can foster them until they're healthier. Um, and then even though they're still not big enough for adoption, she can pass them off and I can give um, another foster family a nice healthy kitten to foster. Um, so yeah, there's no commitment to how long you need to foster. Just keep open communication with us and we're happy to accommodate. Uh, you guys are doing us a huge favor taking these guys in and caring for everybody. Um, also, we do um, recheck every two weeks. We have a little link we give out to fosters and they can very easily make their own appointments. 
um, for those every two weeks vaccinations, we do dewormers, um, if they notice their kidneys are getting sick, if they notice the, the gunky eyes and the boogery nose, um, they can definitely make an appointment for us to see them, um, as well as supply hiccups. So when you're fostering for us, uh, supplies cost you nothing. You don't, you don't spend anything. We will supply you with medications. Uh, we'll do the medical, we'll do litter, food, refills, anything you need, uh, we will provide that for you. So this costs you nothing. Um, we take care of anything. You just do us the favor of taking these guys in and taking care of them, donating your time to us. Um, all right, so that wraps up this segment. Um, so go ahead and tune in on the next se segment at 12.30 where we will be talking about tiny lion tamers as well.